Thanks for coming out. Um, I had a great deal of fun making this movie. I made this movie. My chief collaborator on it, my filmmaking partner on it, is here, Jody Shapiro. He's the producer and the cinematographer. Jody, stand on the up. Film. Yeah, just say hi, please, Jody, wherever you are. There he is. There he is. Yeah. Thanks, Jody, for coming. And, and a dear friend, Charlotte Mickey, who is the distributor on the picture when it came out, is here as well. She's over there, shaking her head no, or hello, or wave. Anyway, um, so it's nice to be here with old friends. And of course, and I'm deeply honored, I get to thank you personally, because I know this Canada's all-time top 10 list was your baby, and um, or you, your baby along with someone else's. Well, <laughs> Pierce's, but yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. But I was I more know. like the midwife. Yeah, exactly. But... Uh, Obviously, it's a ridiculous delight to be part of, of, of it. Um, as you'll soon see in the movie, I have a complicated relationship with my hometown of Winnipeg, where I was born and where I recently had my grave backhoed open and ready to go, ready to roll in. Um, I had noticed that Winnipeg, no, no matter what happened there, and all sorts of strange and wonderful things have happened there, no one even in Winnipeg talked about them. It's just that uh, Canadians, and especially Winnipeggers, I'd noticed, are really bad at self-mythologizing, at remembering themselves, turning them into bigger-than-life stories, whereas you just go 100 kilometers to the south, you're in America, you're in Bemidji, Minnesota, where there's literally a, stat a giant statue of Paul Bunyan, and Americans know how to make things bigger than life, so they're remembered. And I'd always daydreamt, even as a child, what if there was a TV series, and I was thinking an American TV series, what if there was an American TV series set in Winnipeg? You know, what if, you know, then Winnipeg would be remembered, Winnipeg would be thought of. People wouldn't need to come just the way I sort of know what Kansas City's like without ever going there. I sort of know, you know, it has something to do with the blues or something, and I, I, know, I knew what all the major American cities were like, even though I'd never been to them, just from the kind of instant hit you got off them, the instant aroma you got by just hearing, hearing their names, Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, uh, lesser cities even. Even the way Sinclair Lewis wrote a, um, in Main Street about Sauk Center, another just tiny town just to the south of... of of Winnipeg, or to name just one place at random, say Neil Cassidy's autobiographical book about growing up in Denver in the 1930s, Skid Row in Denver, instantly invoked a mythic Denver for me. And I just thought, uh, but the medium of, of um, um, mythologization from its invention onward has been celluloid, has been film, the motion picture. That's how... We all, we all watch things and get our idea of what things are really like, even though we know that reality has altered the instant it is captured by a camera. Um, we know that the, you know, print the myth is what happens all the time. And I just thought, I just want to run my Winnipeg, my personal Winnipeg, which is a very small I mean, almost razor thin slice of the real Winnipeg. I'm, I'm, I'm finally getting out and driving around the town and discovering I, I had no right to make this movie. <laughs> there are whole neighborhoods I'd never heard of, vast <laughs> neighborhoods. <laughs> but um, so now I'm, I'm making a point whenever I, I don't quite, when I'm in work avoidance mode, instead of vacuuming the apartment, I go for a drive and discover Winnipeg and I'm ready for a sequel almost. But, um, but I know I was just, uh, when Jody and I started making this picture back in 2006, we just decided to just run my Winnipeg through a camera and embed it in the medium, the emulsive medium of, of mythology, and then just see what happened. And so that's, that's what I did. And... Um Keep going. Are you gonna? Uh, that's, I'm taking a breath now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you want me to ask a question? I can. Ask uh, you can question. ask me a question. Sure. What did people? Uh, what did when you showed it in Winnipeg? How did people respond? Oh, I'm smart enough about Winnipeggers um, to uh, to not because I'm guessing there's some things they'd never heard of as well. Oh man. <laughs> well, yeah, of course, because we're terrible at at remembering ourselves. You know, we don't feel ourselves um, memorable or memory worthy, um, and that's fine. That keeps us humble. We're also very cynical. Um, you know, we're nasty people. And, uh, but 
wherever, so I traveled with the picture a little bit. It, it, it enjoyed a nice festival run, and, and I went around to various cities and various countries. Jody and I went to Sydney, Australia for a weekend, you know, to, uh, to play the film. And the reason I, I traveled with it is I often narrated it live. I do narrate the movie. Um, but I remembered um, going with my Aunt Lil to a lot of uh, live narrated travelogues as a child. And I thought, well, this is basically a travelogue. It deserves live narration. And even though I have a, you know, I don't have James Mason's voice, I realized I, I would have to narrate it. I'm the filmmaker. Those travelogues are always narrated by the filmmakers. So I didn't want to, but I did it. And um, so I traveled a lot. And it was really interesting. Afterwards, people would step out of the crowd and say, that, that was, man, I've never been to Winnipeg. And now I don't have to go, thank God. And, <laughs> um, but that's pretty much like my town, you know, and unless they grew up in a major world capital like Paris or New York or something, but if they grew up in a secondary or tertiary city or a small town, they'd say that's the way I feel too, you know, and it was really nice. But there was always someone in the audience from Winnipeg who would stand up and go, oh, you don't seem to like Winnipeg very much or something, you know. And, uh, you know, I used to live in Winnipeg about 20 years ago and it wasn't like that at all, you know, and... Um, <laughs> And I, and I would just say the same thing to them every time. Well, I, well, but you left, and I'm still there. You know, <laughs> like, what's your gripe already? And um, so uh, I finally, after a year, um, after it had built up enough positive press, um, dared to mount it in Winnipeg, and I narrated it at the Burton Cummings Theater in Winnipeg, and. Um, which is an, uh, an ancient, it's about 100 years old, like an old vaudeville palace with two balconies. And it used to be air conditioned by um, a basement just filled with blocks of ice. But they don't do that anymore. But they didn't put in air conditioning either. And it was a very hot summer day uh, in, uh, in which I first presented to Winnipeg it's my portrait of, of its of itself, um, and, and people were just sort of melting. But my, um, my mother was there, She's in her, she was in her 90s then, she's still in her 90s, she's 99 in a couple months, and uh, she, um, she was there, and she, you know, she's featured in the movie prominently, my mother features very prominently in, in the, not just the story of my life, but in the story of Winnipeg, and uh, <laughs> she's a domineering force, and, um, she was in, up in a loge, and uh, you know, she's just a simple farm girl turned hairdresser for 50 years, and then, um, and then came to this premiere, and then afterwards, some, I don't know who it was, the house manager had a spotlight turned on her in the balcony, and she just stood up and just waved graciously to the audience, as if she took standing ovations every day <laughs> in her life or something. It was very nice. It was, so it was a very, I think I played it right. Had I premiered the movie there, I would have been, given the usual serial killer treatment that uh, <laughs> locals give uh, to their artists in Winnipeg. So uh, that one I can congr congratulate myself for playing right. And, and uh, how, 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 when, when you decided to make the film, was it, is it, was it just you felt it was time to talk about Winnipeg or, or what led to? Yeah, I'd been, um, the picture, I'd, I guess... I'd made a couple of uh, pictures, Saddest Music in the World and a, and a really low budget film called Cowards Bend the Knee. They were both- Great movie, great thank movie. You. They were both set in Winnipeg. And I just had started like this acting on that, that, long, that childhood dream of mine to embed the name Winnipeg into emulsions. And I just, this was my chance to really go all in on it. So I'd, I'd been, dipping my toe into the idea, and then this time I thought, well, I'll, I'll shoot the works. And now I'm kind of, you know, I better not do it anymore already, that's enough. Although John Waters had a good run with Baltimore, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. it's true. We, one more? Yeah, okay, we gotta, got a bit more time. Um, the, uh, um, how did, uh, uh, how did you, like the, like the, the movie tends, a lot of it's a, a little on the, almost on, like a level of subconscious consciousness. Did you, uh, how did you put it together? Cause it's sort of, I mean, there's all sorts of different, uh, there's, uh, um, uh, you know, there's archival stuff, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah. there's, uh, there's also, um, 
uh, you know, the, there's the, con the guy in the train, uh, the narrator. Uh, how, did, how did you sort of devise those different strains? It all, it all kind of came out, and it's, it's very psychologically honest. My feelings up there are 100% honest. There, I might have gotten details wrong here and there because I'm terrible at research. Uh, but, and I just, I just admit it, I'm going to do all the research uh, I need to do in here. Uh, and a little bit in here, but none actually in a library or on the internet or anything like that. And uh, that was all I needed to do. Uh, the movie kind of came out all in one piece during a Q&A period. After I'd gotten from the great Michael Burns, who was the um, director of the, this wonderful but short-lived documentary channel, had commissioned the movie, um, I was thinking, God, what am I going to do? And I, f and I was in Paris and someone just maybe uh, at a screening of Saddest Music in the World, and someone said, what's, what's Winnipeg like, anyway? And I just spent about 15 minutes giving a very long-winded answer, and I just found myself describing more and more and more about it, and I realized that I, I wrote, basically, uh, three-quarters of the outline for this movie at that point, and I just went straight back to my hotel room and wrote it all down on my laptop and then just sent it to Jody and Michael Burns, and they said, okay, let's... Let's make, let's make this. Then I just spent a lot of time, you'll see a bit of it in the movie, walking my dog Spanky. And uh, something about walking as opposed to driving or flying or anything else puts me anyway in a backward, I cast my thoughts backwards in time more and it's a little bit sweetly melancholic. And I sort of finally, only during walks do I feel my exact place or it feels like I'm feeling my exact place. and time's great flow, and I can feel how, you know, uh, my place that particular night on a dog walk in my own life, and I realize how little time I have left compared to what I normally feel I have left, and, and how I squandered things, and I, I don't know, things just start settling into a different place than they do just during waking hours where you're sitting on a couch or in a desk or, or whatever, so it was written mostly during that Q&A session and then and with all the details filled in during dog walks. And I also went for a few walks with my friend Noam Gonick, who is a huge lover of Winnipeg and, and who taps into a different demographic for, um, he's got his ear to some strange grapevines and he's learned some, some great myths and stories about Winnipeg. And so some of it's his Winnipeg too, but it's, it's something as soon as he told me about it, I made it my Winnipeg as well. <laughs> so uh, that's what uh, filmmakers do. They steal from others and take credit for it all the time. I have to credit Jody because he's here. <laughs> but <laughs> no, I'm, Jody and I have been partners on filmmaking s since the turn of the century. So it's, 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 I'm delighted he's here. Cool. Well, I think on that note, I think we should... Uh, start the film. I uh, did, did want to mention um, uh, that if you want to learn more about My Winnipeg, uh, there's a, a monograph published about the film. Uh, I think Darren Wurschler was the author. Yeah, that was uh, good. I like that one. And uh, it's, it should be available in our bookstore. It was, it's a part of a series that TIFF does with the uh, University of Toronto Press. And it's devoted entirely to My Winnipeg. So yeah, if you want to get got, it's very readable, very, uh, not too thick. Uh, like 90 pages or something yeah. like that with some nice pictures. Concise. Yeah. And, but he, he writes beautifully and he also is telling me stuff about the movie that I didn't even realize. And that's, that, when that happens, that's nice. Score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, well, thank you very much. And thank okay. you guys for coming. Thanks.